You have to do something for 10,000 hours to, 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 to not master it, but to get proficient. And I've, I've put in my 10,000 hours so, for the brain surgeon. <laughs> but no, I'm a plotter. So. Right, so when, and, and, and then, uh, you know, we've been doing craft shows and... Um, farmer's markets. Well, farmer's markets. And it was at, at a farmer's market about three or four years ago that... Somebody came up to us and asked about if we made water filtration crocs. I said, what is a water filtration croc? And we researched it and, and uh, kind of liked, liked that idea of clean, safe drinking water. And we, uh, we you know, looked up the ceramic carbon filters. Uh, and there were a, a few companies we kind of re researched. We found which, which one we, we thought was the best. And I, you know, looked at other some other companies making the Crocs, and uh, to be honest, I wasn't too impressed, you know, with what they looked like. You know, they looked like metal tin cans, or uh, so we we the both of us thought we can make this look look good, handmade, made in America, uh, and also our 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 water here. This is like an old farmhouse, so high iron, a lot of sulfur in the well water. Uh, and we thought, well, even so, I think that first one was really for us, uh, and it worked great. It took out, took all the iron out of the water, took the sulfur out of the water. With these, with the slip cast crocs, we how, the first thing we did on the wheel, we actually threw a croc. Uh, and we planned, you know, we, we, we planned for extra shrinkage because that then has to shrink and then we, we brought it to a, a mold maker who then made a mold from our, our, our template. Uh, right, made a, 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 a plaster mold and that comes in various parts because you had to take into consideration how you remove the piece from the mold. So those all parts come out. That was... Kind of, I, I thought, I thought, I thought, kind of a little feat of engineering, and then from from that we mix our own liquid clay. Um, it's a uh, the word is the word is deflocculated. It just it just uh, the, you add a material to the clay which holds all the particles up in in, in suspension so they don't settle out, and we okay. we mix it in our mixer, uh, and we uh, formulated our own clay body through trial and experimenting to get a, you know, where it was mature at the specific temperature that we wanted it to be and tight and strong. Um, and then, and then, so, so we, we have the mold and we, we put all the, the mold parts uh, 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 together and we have these straps that kind of strap them and hold them nice and tight. Uh, and you kind of, yeah, when you get to the top, you want to pour it kind of slower you know, so that and you can get little air pockets. So you have to kind of tap the mold, and that that will so all those little air pockets will rise to the surface. Because how 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 uh, how this works is uh, the plaster absorbs uh, moisture or water, so it absorbs the uh, the water from the clay right up against it, and that will make a f a film of clay right up against the plaster. And the longer you hold it. It, the, you leave it in the plaster, the the more clay will build up. So we leave it for like two to two and a half hours because we want a good quarter inch of clay. Then then you you uh, you drain the mold, you flip them over, uh, and we've got a we've got a, a draining table with wooden slats on it. So the all the liquid flows down, and then it'll there's a, uh, a hole at the bottom. It'll flow back down into a big plastic bucket that we then put, put back in the mixer.
uh, and then we'll we'll flip it flip it back over. Then it has to sit for a while and let the clay clay kind of dry up, probably two or three hours. Then then we can begin to pull the mold apart, and then so you you take the straps off. Uh, and you pull the sections of the, the mold apart, and then you can lift lift the the, the crock out. The, the clay at that point is still a little soft, so you have to be kind of very delicate with it. Uh, so you, you know you'll 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 you lift it out. You you can either you know I could I could I could work on it then, or sometimes I leave it for a couple of hours, let it stiffen up a bit. But I put the hole in the bottom for the spigot. Uh, I can take a metal scraping tool and scrape off all the little because all the little lines where the sections of the mold were will leave little little lines so that those you take off the seams sponge it down then I'll I will I will make our in in insignia the smiced pottery uh, water water crocks uh, and I've got a I have a a uh, made out of clay uh, in reverse, of course. So uh, uh, that that the template for that, I'll press that into clay. Uh, kind of you know make sure it's pressed in there well. Pull it off and then then <laughs> chop off around it. Pick that up. So we now have that oval oval template, and I'll I'll take a, the a slip, which is the the liquid clay, and I'll scratch up the surface, scratch up the template. And then and then <laughs> join it on. You want to scratch up both surfaces a bit because then they'll it helps them to join, and the slip acts like a glue. It's like a natural clay glue. And then sponge everything off and sponge off all the lines and you know make sure it's all nice and neat and clean. Then it has to now it has to uh, dry for a couple of days, days. and you want to you want it to dry slowly you know because you're trying to avoid warping and cracking and you know the the kind of nightmare of clay uh, so you know usually I'll like leave them for about a week drying slowly then uh, the first fire is the bisque fire which is eight, 1800 degrees and what that firing is doing is and we fire in an electric kiln and what that's doing is turning it from clay into rock it'll never t turn back into clay it goes through a whole uh, of a, uh, a physical change um, and but that's that's high enough where it's really not hard and permanent. But it, but the the clay particles are open and still porous. So so when we apply the glaze to that, which is a liquid that we've mixed up, we have we've developed our own uh, our own glaze formulas and developed them specifically for this clay, so that they you know they, they it all fits well. Okay, so so a clear glaze goes on the inside yeah. first. Right. All, um, and and all the inside parts, like the the, inside the, parts. the reservoir and the and then um, the crack goes on a banding wheel just to facilitate it spinning around, and then the mm. glazes are just applied with, with a brush. brush, right? And so the base green glaze that gets that gets, gets put, put over, over, over the whole outside, whole outside, right? And it doesn't look green when, when you're applying it. it. Yeah, the, it, it, what, the green yeah. glaze actually looks looks brown, brown, right? And, and, um, so so it's a uh, just a combination of materials with some copper in it. And the copper mm -hmm. is what makes the green. So um, that gets put on. That has to dry. Um, and then the other two glazes are put on. So the metallic green, which is just a different glaze, uh, mm -hmm. so it gets put on in a band. Up top. And right. then that dries. And then the... Um, metallic black goes and do, it doesn't look black by the time they all get fired it looks more kind of like brown that's that right. brown right. bit right. and then but, everything has to get cleaned up um, then the little, the little spigot hole and the bottom and all the areas that are going to touch all have to be sponged off and cleaned right. Right. because the glaze will turn to glass when it gets fired and anything that's touching right. glaze to glaze will then right. because, be because, because we actually fire the crock of the unit in the kiln uh, because if we fired all the pieces separately, clay sometimes tends they, to warp in the kiln. Fit. And if it's all as a unit, if it's going to warp, it'll all warp, warp, it'll all warp as, as a unit, and then it'll it'll fit. So all those parts have to be. There can't be any glaze where the two bits of clay are touching, or you'd, it, it would it would it would never come apart. They'd stick. So so that becomes a bit of a 
persnickety to get that all clean and um, right. So then, as the as they're getting fired in the kiln, those glazes are all melting and kind of melding together, and that's how you get that kind of washy, um, almost like oceany look. We will then put that in the glaze kiln, again the electric kiln, and then it gets fired up to. 20, around 2200 degrees uh, and it takes about eight hours to reach temperature and then it cools for maybe uh, another 12 or 14 hours. Uh, then we remove it from the kiln. Uh, you don't want to remove it too hot, like under 200 degrees. Um, you remove it from the kiln and then, then for pretty much it's, it's, it's all done. We then attach the spigot. Uh, we make sure it's good and snug and it's got, it's got those uh, silicone washers that uh, make it make it make the spigot fit fit nicely um, make them make them tight put, and put water in right and then I'll I'll put oh, thank you Judy I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll put put water in leave it overnight and and that's I think that's that's pretty much the and process find their new home and then they go off to their new their new homes mm -hmm.